Hello there everybody, this is Blood and Jake Hammer, and welcome back to Umineko. Now then, I went ahead and checked the weather, it's a beautiful day outside. Birds are chirping and flowers are blooming, and I think it's a great day for us to freaking join into Umineko. Yeah, you thought I was gonna go with something else, weren't you? On Rokinjima, this day, or rather, this round, was the same as any other. The typhoon would be coming very soon. The clouds hadn't yet grown thick, but they were moving quickly. Hey, Nazi! Hello, Genji. The only thing on Nazi's mind was the plan to cover up Kinzo's absence this year as well. Of course. Kraus appeared to have suffered a stomachache from the stress and was sleeping in his room. Hey, this is the fisherman! Kuma Jessica and Kumasawa had left in a boat to go shopping and greet the incoming relatives on Nijima. The servants had been busy since the early morning in preparation for the family conference, the greatest event of the year. Shannon and Ken were getting the guest house ready. <laughs> お屋敷の客室で十分だろうね。でも、ゲストハウスのお掃除は好き。奥様や他の無活苦しようにもいないから静かでいいもんね。Shannon smiled bitterly as she performed a detailed examination of the guest room. Did we forget to clean anything? Do we need to restock anything? She diligently gave the room one final check over. Sakuyamon よく確認しながら仕事をしないからだよ。だから私と一緒に点検してくれてるんだよね。ありがとう。別に感謝されることじゃないよ。Whoa, hello, new pose. I noticed that in the last episode that there were some new expressions. Well, I'm glad there's more variety added. Cool. ねえさんがしっかりしてくれれば、僕まで付き合わなくて済む。Nice to see you in a different position there, Canon.本当は私と一緒にいたいんだよね。甘えん坊さんなんだから。そ、そんなんじゃないってば。姉さんは最近ジョージ様のことで浮かれてるみたいだからね。ミスが多そうで見てられないだけだよ。ね。カノン君、
So that's it. I'm a dog. Never mind. I'm just gonna be quiet. Nanami, Nei-san is a human to be with. I can't do anything. So, Kana, so I'm deciding. We're not a dog, are we? I'm a dog. I'm a dog. I'm a dog. I'm a dog. なんとも思ってない。You lying。お使いする後ろ見分けのご令状だとしか思ってない。本当に？本当さ。な、何？私ね、ひょっとすると今夜ジョージ様に求婚されるかもしれない。Shannon wore an incredibly peaceful smile on her face, but Cannon could tell that there was no way she'd let him change the subject. Cannon realized that she must have made him help out here in the guest house in order to talk to him about this, and he clicked his tongue softly. So, so that's it. We're not human. We're not human. We're not human. We're human. We're not human. We're 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 human. いまだに話せない姉さんが家具とか人間とかそんなの関係ないジョージ様は私のすべてを受け止めてくれると思うのそれを確かめる勇気もないくせに私ね求婚受けてみようと思うの As Shannon looked up at the ceiling, she spoke of the imagined future that she and George would create. Though the same anxiety over the future appeared on her face, so did joy from discovering what it was like to live with love. As Kenan watched this vivid dream he was being shown, he knew that none of his words would reach Shannon anymore. Ken walked over to the window silently. He saw the rose garden filled with boring gray flowers in bloom. He realized that Shannon was acting above her place, and he knew that her tale had no chance of a happy ending. However, he also knew that no words of his could change her mind now that she had made her decision. Nara, I can't say anything to you. If you say it, I don't hear you. If you say it, I don't hear you. Why do you say it to me? Why do you say it to me? Why do you say it to me? I don't have any answers for you. I know that you don't want to do anything. I want to know what you want to do with your father's feelings. I think it's already a given at this point. I don't have any relationship with my father. You know what I think of your father's feelings? I don't think of your father's feelings. I have, I, I kind of have a few episodes we can kind of reference to back that up a little bit here. わかるもん。姉さんだもん。わからないよ。僕の気持ちなんて。わかるよ。カノン君のことなら、私は何でもわかる。本当に分かってるならどうして聞くんだよ
姉さんはジョージ様のことでもう胸も頭もいっぱいじゃないかそして僕もそんな一途な姉さんが大好きなんだだから僕なりに応援してるんじゃないかそうでなかったら僕だって僕だって僕だってお嬢様を好きになりたかった There you go! Kenan finally turned to face her, honestly and openly telling her his real emotions. That was what Shannon had wanted to hear. And after hearing that, she closed in even further on Kenan's true feelings. So, what do you want to say? I don't know. 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 I don't まぶしすぎるんだよ、お嬢様が。太陽のようで生き様がまぶしすぎて。そんなお嬢様が好きなんだ。そんなお嬢様に手を差し伸べられて共に歩こうと言ってもらえて嬉しかった。うん。嬉
姉さんの幸せを傷つけるかもしれないのに私も自覚してるよ私の幸せがカノン君を傷つけることを We have no choice but to hurt each other. As she said this, Shannon turned her back to Cannon. As Cannon watched Shannon from behind, he was struck by her strength and the love she still felt for him despite everything. I. Mm, yes, this is a very nice moment, but. What? Why did I get a sudden chill down my spine? I What? Maybe I'm just being a little paranoid, I don't know. Wins at what? Right. Huh. Guess I was being paranoid for nothing. Uh, uh, just the way they worded that was kind of freaking me out a little bit. Ah, eh, I'm just being paranoid. The boat carrying the relatives docked at the harbor. They left the boat one by one, making fun of Battler. Of course they were! Goda wasn't the only one to greet them. Cannon was there too. Goda complimented Cannon in a whisper. Cannon ignored this, looking just a little sour, and continued to greet the incoming relatives. Hey, Maria! Maria, but I'm the first time! Hey, Maria! Maria, I'm the first time! Hey, Maria! I'm the first time! Hey, Maria! Hey, Maria! Hey, Maria! Hey, Maria! Hey, Maria! Hey, Maria! ガノン君もお久しぶりね。今日は元気そうね。よかった。そ、そうでしょうか。そうね。顔色が悪くないわ。血色がいいというか、目つきが凛々しくなったというか。成長期なんだろ。そうして少年は大人になってくんだな。普
からかわれてないわよみんな褒めてるのよ<笑> Cannon had sworn to start changing the way he lived bit by bit However, he had only meant to change within himself, and hadn't expected that it would show on the outside. He was a bit shocked to hear that his expression had changed so much, that people had apparently noticed as soon as he opened his mouth. No. Maybe the real surprise should have been that his normal expression must have looked so incredibly sullen in comparison. Gota led the way up to the guest house. Kanan brought up the rear, helping to carry some Akumasawa shopping. I... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what is what. I don't know, that giggle just kind of cracked me up there. Even Kumasai was saying it. Cannon, unable to see what his own face looked like, hung his head in embarrassment. When they reached the get Rose Garden, they see the others entering the they could see the others entering the guest house. Then he saw Jessica running towards him from there. Is even Milady Jessica going to say that I'm in a good mood today? Cannon hung his head even deeper, and so almost as though he couldn't control himself, Cannon spoke first. あ、先ほどはお嬢様にご同行できなくて申し訳ありませんでした。え Damn, just outright saying it. Jessica faltered, uncertain what Cannon was talking about. However, she realized that this was something too important to be laughed off. Jessica thought that this change in Cannon's appearance was probably caused by a change in his state of mind. She thought he was sad that he and Shannon would soon be parting ways. Cannon realized that Jessica was probably thinking this, so he spoke to her clearly and honestly, because he wanted her to know. Jessica was stunned, unable to understand what he was saying. However, she did realize that he was trying to tell her something important. And so, she was able to accept that his next words were neither a lie nor a joke. あなたの太陽のごとき生き方は僕も一緒に歩んでみたい。あなたとなら家具と下げ済んだ自分から決別できるかもしれない気がする。仕事の男の子として、もっともっと人生を楽しんでいいはずなんだよ。私も眩しいや。カノン君が眩しくて目が見られない。これが偽らされ僕の気持ちです。<笑> <私も眩しいや。笑> それを今まで誤魔化してきてすみませんでした。
僕の目標さがお嬢様を傷つけたあの日をお詫びしますいいよその言葉だけで私は嬉しいだから僕はお嬢様といつまでも一緒にいるために家具をやめようと思います僕にそのための時間をください最後にその弱さを許してくださいよ弱さなんてとんでもないカノン君は見せてくれたよ今までの自分と決別したいっていうとびきりの勇気をだから私は応援したいしせかさずいつまでも待つよ私が太陽になって君の道を照らせるなら私だって君という人がいてくれたから誰よりも眩しく輝いて君の瞳に私だけを映したいと思った君がいなかったら私だって太陽になんてなれなかった girl,、yes. だから待つよ Because to be quite honest, besides Beato and Battler, this is like my favorite two. This is like my favorite pairing. I can't h o l y shit, you're smiling! Oh my god! It took you this fucking long to start smiling! Shannon got a lot of things to do with the story. I can't do it. Uh. Cannon hung his head at a loss for words for some time. But it was true. If Shannon hadn't told him about the engagement, he probably wouldn't have been having this conversation at this moment. Yes. That's why I was t h i n Did you expect any less? In truth, the real reason was different for both of them. They had been shown the courage needed to speak up and tell the person you love how you feel. This is the reason for both Canon and Jessica. お呼びすればジェシカがいいな呼びつけはテレマスじゃさん付けでもいいから最初は行ってみてほらほらジェジェシカさんうん今はそれでいいだから私もカノン君のことを名前で呼びたいカノンじゃなくて本当の名前があるんでしょきっとカノンの「カ」が含まれた名前だと思うなあなんだろう<笑>ヨシアと言いますヨシア Finally, we get your name. What did it take like fucking six episodes? Now we have your name? So, Yoshia and Sayo. <laughs> Jessica tried tracing out various characters on the palm of her hand. Then, Ken used his own finger to write out his name on her hand. <laughs> いい名前だね私の変な名前と違って素敵だと思うよそんなことありません
お嬢様のジェシカって名前だってあそれもう一回言ってえおお嬢様のジェシカってもう一回おお嬢様のジェシカって名前だって<笑>その何か<笑>何でもないよありがとうよしや The red, red flowers of the Rose Garden seemed to celebrate the two lovers whose feelings had finally connected. The scene was watched by, not, by one not human, who gazed out quietly from beneath the Rose Garden arbor. Who, I wonder? Oh. <sighs> Come to think of it, those two had never called each other by their names until now. Jessica hadn't known Cannon's true name. Cannon hadn't called Jessica by her name. By calling someone by their name, people acknowledge the worth of that person's soul. That is why names are sacred. Getting permission to say someone's name means that they have acknowledged your soul. No, that's probably wrong. When father sees me, it reminds him of that other me, the past me. And I'm sure that me called father by his name. However, that probably doesn't mean father would be happy to hear me call him by his name. After all, I am me, and not the Beatrice my father knows well. What can I do to help father? How can I be useful to him? That's the only reason I was born. Hanging her head, Beatrice sat all alone in the Golden Lands Arbor that was next to the Rose Garden. The scene was watched by the Witch of Theater going and her Miko as they sat across from each other. Also, one of you guys in the comments kind of told me something a little interesting here. Um. I, I'm, don't quote me on this, but I think one of you guys, I think one of you guys mentioned that, um, the Witch of Theater going, oh my god, I legitimately just forgot her name. Fuck. But she's supposed to represent the people who have discovered the truth of Umineko, like she's supposed to be the person that knows all the, or I guess 90% of the answers. And Angie is, well, me. I haven't really figured out the truth, so, so I think that's I think that's what you, I think that's how you guys phrased it. Inter that's interesting. Interesting. Yes, it's pretty obvious that while they are the same person, they are not the same person. What I just said made no sense. That makes sense. It may be that, by the rules, this Beato is THE Beato. However, saying that would be horribly unfair to her. Yeah. Indeed. Compared to the young boy and girl who had found new versions of themselves and called each other by their true names, this witch looked very feeble. The witch knew that she was an illusion created in the image of the person she once was, and she also knew that it would only hurt Battler to try and pretend to be that person. ベアトリーチェという魔女の意味なの。彼女はそうだと実証している。自分はバトラの役に立つために生まれてきたと。お兄ちゃんのために生まれてきたベアトは、やがては連続殺人を犯し、お兄ちゃんに永遠の拷問
人は別人にもなり得るとそなたも理解しているはず。True. At the very least, Beatrice was once a pure creature who was born for Battler's sake. It is also very clear that in her current feeble state, she does not possess any of the courage or the motivation needed to bring about those fearsome serial murders. If so, that means the sinister witch we all know must have changed during the thousand years since her birth. In other words, the pure Beato transformed into the cruel Beato. During those six years that could be called a thousand. So, does that mean something bad happened during those six years that made her hate Onichan? It must be, it obviously must be connected to the sin he committed. おやこちらにおいででしたかお紅茶でもお入れしましょうか Isn't this Kuodorian? 熊沢さん、oh. 知りたいことがあります<笑>はいはい、何でしょうか私はベアトリーチェという名前なんですよね Ooh. ええー、そうですともお嬢様はベアトリーチェ様でございますともでもお父様が口にするベアトリーチェという人物は私のことではありませんいやそれはお父様は私にその人であってほしかったように思いますだから私が失望されたのではないでしょうか。そんなことはございませんよ。お嬢様はお嬢様、ベアトリーチェ様ご自身ですとも。This is very eerily. This is yeah. This is completely mirroring Kenzo and Beatrice. 新しくお生まれ変わりになるとき。以前の記憶を失ってしまっただけでございますよ。たとえ記憶をなくされようとも、お嬢様はベアトリーチェ様。親方様の愛されるお方と同一人物でございますとも。その記憶というのは、どうやれば取り戻すことができますかそれは。Beato looked at Kumasawa with hopeful eyes, as though praying that she would tell her the way. Kumasawa averted her gaze unhelpfully, as though trying to say that she would, if only such a way existed. お父様のために生まれてきました。What?だからお父様のためにお父様のために生まれてきました。What?だからお父様のために生まれてきました。What?だからお父様のために生まれてきました。What?だからお父様のために生まれてきました。What?だからお父様のために生まれてきました。What?
私が示せる唯一のご恩返しです。けなげじゃない千年を間違えなきゃ最高にいい子だわ魔女のひななかなか面白きかな気に入ったぞエンジェそのひなの娘に我が職を許すがいい魔女の世界へ帰る扉を開いてやるがよかろうぞあれ彼女自身にかつての彼女の物語を朗読させようというわけね。That, mm, considering how innocent she is, I don't. Hmm. なるほど。私も知りたいわ。黄金の魔女ベアトリーチェを作る物語。いいでしょう。あなたが望むならば。扉を再び開きましょう、うん、熊沢さんあゴールデンスプラッシュ welled up around them it was a cloud of gold butterflies Virgilia with a golden flash the form of the old lady transformed into that of a witch in a dress あなたの進むべき道はあなたが決めなさいそれはおそらくバラの道美しく咲き誇ったバラがあなたを祝福するかもしれないしそのトゲであなたを苛むかもしれないしかしそれでもあなたがいつかたどった道その結果同じ千年を経てもいい異なる千年を経てもいい望むなら道を引き返してもいい進みます私はこの庭で千年お茶を飲んでいるだけで過ごしたくないんですお父様のためにこのベアトリーチは生まれてきましただからお父様のために生きようと教えてください黄金の魔女 I don't know if that'll be a good thing or a bad thing, though. The Great Witch spread her arms, communicating the other's unbending determination to the, to the brilliant heavens. At that moment, a brilliant light covered the two of them. And before they knew it, they were in a strange study. There sat the master of these archives, the great old witch and her Miko. Virgilia gave a deep and elegant bow. Hayet, Shigok Koe ni Zonjimus. Songen nar Kangekito Gikokto Bokan no Majo. Fezarinu Augustus Aurora Kyo. Well, frickin' no wonder I forgot her name. Omoteo Ageo, Hito no Koyo. Sono Musmeni. しばしの間我が諸侯を自由に閲覧する資格を与えようぞ我が巫女エンジェその方に世話を命ずはいはいお任せよ我が主素直にそなたの物語が見たいと言えばいいのに感激の魔女の巫女よベアトリーチェをお預けしますよろしくお願いしますあんたのなろうとしているベアトリーチェは彼女なりに何かを苦しんでいたわ少なくとも今のあなたはその何かから解き放たれている自らその枷を取り戻すために旅に出るのはい私は黄金の魔女になりたいんですそれが私の生まれてきた理由です彼女の煉獄をめぐる旅が快適であるよパビュラス・ヴァギリア・マルそして保護が与えられるよ無限と有限の魔女プブリウス・ワルギリア・マロの名において要請しますえあ,あえっと
感激の魔女の巫女にして無限の魔女半言の魔女見習いエンジェ・ベアトリーチェの名において了承する者なりやと奉ったり踏んだり蹴ったり<笑>あなたもベアトリーチェという名をええあなたのことはよく知ってるわ教えてください私がどんな私だったのかええ A lovable psychopath? だから教えてあなたがどうしてあなたになったのか<笑>この職にはこれまでのそなたのゲームの物語のかけらがすべて書物として収められているそれを読むことでそなたはこれまで何があったかのすべてを知ることができるだろうそれを読めば私は黄金の魔女になれますか、うん、黄金の魔女を継承するには黄金の碑文を解かねばならぬそしてその試練はたとえベアトリーチェ本人だとしても免れることは許されぬ<笑>頑張りますですから私に書庫の本を読ませてください本当にけなげだわわざわざあんなのになんで戻りたがるんだかその私がどんな自分だかは知りませんでもその自分がお父様のお役に立てるなら私はそれになりたいです Angie sighed resignedly No words would stop this girl's feelings of respect Angie was the Miko of the Witch of Theater going She could do nothing except to watch over the stage. Yes, they weren't actually interfering with the play. This was just a bit of directing, to shine the spotlight onto the tale of Beato's past. Even this was nothing more than the Witch of Theater going watching a play. ショコニトドマルモジユー、タチサルモジユー、再びモドルコトサイモジユーだ。その対価として、私はそなたを感激する。感激とは要するに、好きにしていいって意味よ。あ、ありがとうございます。アウグサ、<笑> I'll give you an A for effort. After being welcomed in by Featherine, Beato left on a journey to know herself. That tale connected the old tale with the new one. It wove them together. The thousand-year-old tale about her returned to its starting point, becoming a snake eating its own tail. The ring of that snake began slowly, bit by bit, to turn into the shape of a small island floating on the sea. That island was Rokunjima. The thousand years of the witch born on this island were tied to the island. Was it a thousand years? Or just six? Or did this tale start even further back into the past? Beatrice went out on a journey to find herself. Ooh, thunder. Holy shit. The typhoon hit? The wind had been strengthening since a while back. The breaking waves had grown fierce. The ferry boats probably wouldn't be coming for a while now. The crashing thunder told that the island had been sealed off from the outside world. A thick rain poured down, mocking the fools outdoors who had to rush pathetically to find shelter. No longer would anyone be able to leave this island. And no longer would anyone be able to reach this island. No one. 
unless blessed with a miracle. There was another flash of lightning. The retinas of all who saw it were filled with white. As that white faded away, an eerie shadow pulled itself up amidst the raging waters of the beach. As though suddenly remembering, it coughed violently several times, filthily spitting out the seawater that had filled its stomach. She then tore apart the Velcro of her life jacket, and threw down the reason she had been able to float here without so much as a thank you. I knew I couldn't get rid of you that easily, could I? And of course, she makes a return. The news about the drifter, Furudo Erika, quickly spread across Rokunjima. Erika had been politely entertained as it was decided that she would be treated as a guest until the typhoon passed. In the dining hall, Goda's wonderful dinner had ended, and everyone was relaxing and enjoying some after-dinner coffee and cheese. Coffee and cheese. My god, I thought I was the only one that did that. Apparently, Battler was a bit relieved that Erika had come and turned into a good scapegoat. It drove away some of the attention he'd been getting piled on him for finally coming back after six years. In fact, she turned out to be very talkative. When the conversation turned to a sophisticated discussion of the mystery genre, even the adults were drawn in. She was apparently so well-versed that even Nanjo, who had a vast knowledge of the subject, was impressed. ハハハハ。確かにな。嵐のことに妖怪に不気味な一族。そこに雨宿りの探偵とくりゃ、もうお膳立てが揃ったも同然だぜ。ご安心を。<笑> どんな難事件であっても解決してお見せしますので、それが探偵の務めです。頼もしいじゃないか。むしろ何か怪事件が起こってほしいものだね。犠牲者役はごめんこむるんだ。You might want to knock on some ほんの Everyone couldn't help but gape at this imposing claim. If an aged critic had said it, that would have been one thing. But to think that a young person like this could say it so boldly. わたしの言わせればですが、でも不勉強なバカばっかりのおかげで、私は探偵面ができるというわけです。それを言ったら、恋愛なんてシェイクスピアの時代に完成されてて、以後は読む価値もないってことになるぜ。そうですね。じゃ
悪しき解雇主義じゃねえのか I can kind of agree with that. それこそ、読書をサボる年寄りどもの言い訳だと思うぜ。そうですね。私もバトラさん程度には本を読まないと言い任されちゃいそうです。俺<笑>本なんか読まねえし。Battler chuckled, but Erkin knew from the previous game that Battler was actually quite an avid reader. So his words felt like more of a challenge. So many more sweetie jiman nara. Quiz to ka puzzle to kawa to quiz so dane. Ah, Moria sa. Hora. Quiz to ka no hom motte na katta ke. Ah! Aru! Picking up that Erika's arrogant statement had made the atmosphere a little more tense, Georgie smoothly changed the subject. By now, it was more than clear that she wasn't the cute guest she'd appeared to be. Maria pulled a book out of her bag that had quizzes and puzzles written on it and started reading them to everyone. It might have looked as though it would become a peaceful quiz party, but of course, that isn't what happened. In credit to all her big talking, Erica managed an impressive ratio of correct and immediate answers. Erica took complete control. Her bragging began to escalate more and more. Georgie slightly regretted the choice he had made when changing the subject. The question, how many matches would you need for a tournament with 107 teams, was answered instantly by Erica. まあ、例題の両チームなら三試合、八チームなら七試合という数字を見た時点で、高速性に気づいて当然ですが。うん、エリカすごい。エリカお姉ちゃんでしょ？言ってごらん。うん、エリカお姉ちゃんすごい。大
I'm, I'm literally doing the math again in my head. Three slices, actually. I think I think three slices would be the correct number. <笑>そういうことかな。こういうのは想定の回数より少なくできるものと相場が決まっている。なんか now, if only I was good at editing, I could schedule a di or make a diagram showing how I come up with the answer three. Ah, I got that. I got that. This is cheese. So, ne? Birthday cake. De, kore o yatta ra open ka ni naru wa ne? So ya na. Cheese nara tomo gaku cake o kiru ni wa sono kiri kata ja akan na. Three slices. みんな答え分かってんのかよ。くそ。分かんねえの俺だけかよ。ああ、分かったぜ。なるほどね。三次元で考えなきゃダメなんだ。Wait, I feel like I'm being played here. ここに書いてあるもん。わかる、バタラ君。なるほど。私にもわかりました。これはチーズだからこそできることですな。I got played. I think I, I... I fell for it. What the fuck? I fell for it! Wait, what? Knife <laughs> ノーワクネーゼ。ナイフ以外では切れないチーズってことで。うーん。うーん。うん。チーズを立体的に想像するんだよ。オッケー。難しいなら紙の付近の裏に絵を描いてみるのもいいかもね。no, I've got the, I've got, I've got it in my head. Oh, oh. Okay. So, knife de yatsuni. Knife a chuksen janaka kichatami. Eh, so yo? Of course, I can only cut in a straight line. Knife a chuksen ni kiridake. Ma, demo hinto, eh? Kirikata a chuksen ni janaka dame dake do. Doko kirikawa jiuna yo? But you're free to cut it wherever you want. Uh, um, どうやってナイフを入れればいいか、いろいろ想像してみろ。少々ひねくれたやり方を想像した方がいいだろうな。バトラ君のお手並みを拝見だ。You have a large piece of We're having a discussion about cheese. How many times must you cut it with a knife to make 8 pieces? It's obvious that you could do it in 4 cuts. Can it be done in even fewer? Yes, it can be done in 3 cuts. The hint said that it was something that could be done because it was cheese. If it was a birthday cake, you really wouldn't be allowed to do this. Cheese. 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 Oh. 
ああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああようやくひらめいたようですねそれが正解だといいのですがチーズはナイフ以外では切れないんだよなナイフは直線だけで切るんだよな、right. それ以外に何も条件はないよななあああ特にないよっしゃ間違いないかーひでえ問題だぜこれはまるで謎謎だ I'm pretty sure it is a riddle. Ha 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 ha! Ue kara kiru bakari ga no ja nai ってことだぜ Ue kara nigai kitte yon bunkats. Right. Sono jotai de sokmen kara kireba. Jodan to gedan ni wakarete yon bunkats ga bai no hachi bunkats. So wait, I was right. Bittai de kangai nai to dase nai kotai da ne. Tsumari, se kai wa san kai sa. I was right! This had me freaking thinking that I was wrong! What the shit?、Uh, so、なのか Wait, did you come across a different answer? Wait, what? <laughs> Let's go. Wait, I want to hear how you came across the answer one. Sankai ってのはすぐに思いついたんだが、それじゃ簡単すぎて問題にならないと思って、ひねりすぎたか。バトラの答えの方が、五分の答えより少ない。Well, how did he come across the answer? Batra ga sekai? Eh, so des. Batra san ga sekai des. Sekai wa ikkai des. Ow! Bala was happy that someone had confirmed his answer. However, at some point, Erika's face had lost its cheeriness. Batashi igai ni ikkai to kotae rare ru ningen ga ite. Sore ga yori ni mo yotte. Hanata to wa. エリコも答えは一回なのかよどうやらお前も相当ひねくれてるみたいだな Now I'm giving myself a headache how to do it with just one <笑>一個のチーズと聞いてその形状を決めつけるのは実に愚かしいことですので Oh my god I'm an idiot できるわけないわお兄ちゃんの勘違いでしょ3回未満でどうやって8等分するのよ愚かしや人の子よ<笑> 8つに分けろとは言っているが等分にしろとは問うていない And today's episode of a m i n a k a was brought to you by Velveeta それにしたって不可能でしょナイフ以外の方法で切るの Please don't sue me, Velveeta. Knife, you guys, they were killing I. Knife, I took Sinny Kiraneva Naranaito, joking. Shkashi, Gakuni Eva, Sorega, any joking. Yeah, so much so more. Cheese no Katatsaimo, she may say it away. True. Soko, Mina, Okina cheese, I eat cot the key there. カマンベールみたいな平べったい円筒状のものを想像してたのか。No, I was actually thinking of a square piece of cheese, actually. 俺は朝食のトーストの上に乗せるスライスチーズを想像していたぜ。Exactly what I was thinking. <笑>ナイフで切り分けるような立派なチーズとは普段縁がねえからよ。チーズの形状に条件は示されませんでした。出題者のミスですおそらくマリアさんのその本にはいわゆる平べったい円筒状チーズの図面があるはずですうんあるほら As Erica had guessed, the book Maria held had an illustration of a piece of cheese just as Erica had described it. 
With cheese of this shape, three slices really would be the correct answer. You cut it in a plus pattern from the top to make four pieces, then cut it from the side to double that and make eight pieces. However, since this illustration hadn't been shown, the interpretation of the cheese had been left to the answerer. Maybe if the cheese is designed in a zigzag? To fold it accordion style, you alternate between upward and downward folds. Once you've done this six times, it looks like the size of the side of an accordion. Well, of course. Oh, I see what you did there. え、the thing never, the, well, to be fair, the riddle never stated they had to be equal parts. ふふ。<laughs> <laughs> For a while, everyone was stunned. Hell, even I'm stunned I didn't see that coming. Balor had reached a far better answer than three by thinking of the problem as a riddle. Eric had already known both answers and even spotted a mistake made by the book. The others could do nothing but stare at those two in surprise. <laughs> That had to be some sturdy freaking cheese. Majo-no-mishitsu-no-kangekyo-no-kihon-chu-no-kihon-no-kihon-no-kihon-no-kihon-no-kihon-no-kihon-no-kihon-no-kihon-no-kihon-no-kihon-no-kihon-no-kihon
5枚のコインでもできるでしょうかあーうん権利戦またチンプな問題が出てきましたねまさか皆さんこの程度の問題にまたまばたきをいくつも費やされるおつもりで Well, excuse me! By now, Erica was gazing around with an unpleasant look, acting in a manner that was completely inappropriate for both for a guest and for someone of her age. She was no longer a guest who would be staying until the storm passed. She had transformed into an annoying guest who wouldn't leave until the storm passed. Everyone thought this, but they were unable to say it aloud. Hmm. Ah, 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 コインをお箸で掴めるかどうかでわかるそうだね。What? お箸。で、ね、そうです。お箸です。Uh. お箸は世界で最も優雅な食器です。Oh yeah, I forgot she had a chopstick fetish。突き刺し、引きちぎって口に運ぶナイフとフォークなんて山の極み。お箸こそが最高です。私の箸使いこそが芸術ジャスカ was about to say isn't a chop chopstick just a stick but stopped herself just in time she realized that it was best to let George take control for now 小銭あるけどちょっと僕と競争してみない僕もお箸の持ち方には厳しいんだ Oh boy そ、そうやなジョージの箸はずいぶん厳しく教えたんや What did you do? Go to a mountain for 10 years and train using a chopstick? You must brush your teeth with chopstick. You must brush your hair with chopstick. You must kill for with chopstick. Table manner was so that you got it. Some of one of them. Erica San no much got a mo, Nakanaka. Or no cosenimo castierze. My son, I hope I'm almost ready. Jessica, you can meet the boy in a side. よし、競争しよう。ここにある小銭をどれだけ多く自分のお皿に移せるか。望むところです。お箸、お箸。Jesus Christ, I was joking about you having a fetish for him, but my God, man. Child, I mean, blue-haired gremlin. Fuck, I don't know. This time, George had steered the conversation into a good direction. Everyone else understood, and they helped to egg on this chopstick fight and, and change the subject. They were fully aware by now that Erica was extremely proud of her, of her intelligence, and apparently she had the bad habit of using that to look down on other people. She spun her chopsticks around with the deft hand of a juggler, staring at the coins scattered on the table like a dog begging for a meal. The unsettling sound of the wind had now blended in with the sound of rain, resembling the howl of some monstrous beast. Just when it seemed to be crying out sadly, it would suddenly turn into a roar and rattle the window, striking up even more fear and unease within me. Light from the hallway poured in through the thin crack of the slightly open door, and it seemed to carry with it laughter that was warm and happy, but very distant. I'm sure everyone's in the dining hall or somewhere having a good time. I want to go there as soon as I can. I'm sure my family will be there. I hate being all alone in a place like this. Dad. Mom. I stubbornly tried again and again to open the door, but the merciless chain just wouldn't let the door open any further than that crack. On the contrary, feeling this close to a way out just made me more impatient. Gulping and trying to ignore the fear lurking behind me, I quietly closed the door. The light coming out of the crack is just a trap. This is an iron shackle, trying to keep me locked in here for eternity by making me think I'm just an inch away from getting out a door that will never actually open. I need to get out of this creepy room as soon as possible. When I closed the door, all that filled the room was that eerie sound of wind and rain. The way the wind picked up every now and then and shook the window frame felt like a monster in a cage shaking the bars. I was so scared of that monster. 
couldn't help but avert my gaze from the window. I'm gonna search. If I can't get out that door, I need to find another way out. Just to the side of the door was a closet. There was only enough space inside to hang overcoats. Of course, it didn't connect to anywhere outside the room. If this were hide-and-seek, it'd probably be fun to hide in there. However, inside this creepy room, it would be no better than stepping into my own coffin. If I go in there, maybe I won't be able to get out of the closet next. This fear I didn't understand sent a massive shiver up my spine, and I closed the closet door in a hurry. There's one door left. When I opened it, there was the ba there was the bath and toilet. Of course, there was no exit. There weren't have there weren't even any windows. If I turned the faucet, water could probably come out, then disappear down the drain and flow outside. But I couldn't go out get out that way. Unless I went into the bathtub with the stopper pulled out of the drain and smashed my flesh and bones to bits. I had the feeling that this was the only way out. So the black stopper in the bathtub drain looked extremely terrifying. I tried a lot of things, both mentally and physically, but there really was no way of getting out through the bathroom. Next is the window. Beyond the window is a pitch black darkness. The fierce winds and rain are slamming against the glass. The darkness on the other side of the window may have been unsettling, but I didn't really care whether where I went as, as long as it was outside this room. However, the window was clamped shut. Right down the middle of the window, which was made to swing open like a set of double doors, were several ugly metal clamps. It was even more unnerving than the chain on the door. Like a rough operation scar on some bizarre monster. The wind and rain slammed against and shook the window frame, making it creak loudly. However, unlike the door, this wouldn't open even a crack. I've had enough. Get all rest already. What the hell's going on with this room? I've had enough of this creepy room. Enough, 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 enough! It's impossible to go outside except by the door and windows. And compared to that thick door, the window looks like it might be possible to break. Smash it. If I swing a chair at it, the glass will probably be break. I might even be able to smash the wooden grid that runs through these latiste windows. All I need to do is make a gap large enough to slip out of. I grabbed a fancy-looking antique chair and headed back to the window. Smash it. Over and over. The glass, sma the glass smashed with a violent sound, and the fl frame groaned and creaked. Smash it, smash it. Over and over. If I can just break through the wooden grid. Damn it. What the hell? Even though the glass had been smashed apart, even though the cold rain that blew and tormented me, I just couldn't get that grid to break. There were They weren't iron bars. It was just a slender wooden mesh. Even though it's fragile enough to make that creaking sound, why doesn't it break? No, wait. Maybe it's almost broken. What if I try attacking it from a different angle instead of just smashing it head on? I stuck my left hand outside through the hole in the broken Latiste window, grabbed the frame from the front with my right hand, and tried to break it by shaking it around from both sides. My left hand started to grow ice cold from the frigid winds and rain. As I shook, fragments of glass sticking out from the broken frame poked into me, and my wrist was soon stained with blood. But if I can just get out of here, this much pain is no big deal. But I can't get out. I'm stuck. It won't open. I can't break it. The more violently I shook the frame, the more the glass fragments tore into my left wrist, causing me intense pain. Wait, that what's... Huh? Ow, 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 ow! Before I realized that the glass fragments on the frame had extended outwards. It was as though an ugly beast was trying to chew my hand off with glass teeth. It didn't just feel as though they were growing outwards. They actually were getting longer before my very eyes. They're chewing my hand to bits! I tried desperately to pull my hand out, but it had already dug deep into my wrist and I couldn't move it. I pulled all my- I put all my strength into it, but it just hurt more and more and the glass didn't even budge. What the hell? Damn it, let go, let go, let go! I hit the glass with my right fist over and over, but that just hurt my right fist and did nothing to release my other hand. Just then, my left hand which was still stuck outside and exposed to the rain, brushed against... something slimy. What? It 
couldn't have been the leaf blown out by the winds or anything like that. I mean, it just felt like the touch of someone's rain-soaked hand. Then, it closed tightly around my left hand. When I felt the five fingers, I knew that some person out in the darkness was touching my left hand. And, yes, I know who it is. It's the witch. The terrifying witch who controls Rokanjima's night. The two hands soaked in the freezing rain gently caressed my left hand. However, though I could tell this was happening from the touch, I couldn't see anything out there in the darkness. Then, it felt about my fingers and twisted my ring finger upwards. Ow, 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 ow! It, it's gonna break... Uh. At that moment, I saw something in the darkness for the first time. It was white. The darkness grinned and bared its white teeth. Then, that mouth filled with eerily white teeth which had lined up next to my twisted finger, opened wide. They must have been laughing at me from the darkness. After all, that creepy mouth was twisting upward in a huge grin. I had a horrible idea of what it might be trying to do to my finger. A shiver ran up my spine. I resisted as much as I could, but the fangs of glass just wouldn't release my left hand. And then, it gently bit my finger. Flesh and bone were crushed and torn apart in an instant. Crunch. Rip. Tear. Squelch. Splat. Oh, ボクも この廊下の向こうには何があるんですか ま、新築だからな。私も自分の部屋をそっちに移したいもんだぜ。シャノ、まだ探偵モードなのかよ。<笑> Hmm. The adults were apparently about to begin a conversation that they didn't want the kids to hear. The real family conference was about to start. As the kids and Erica followed Shannon on their way to the guest house, they passed through the entrance hall.
ますますにお膳立てが整っているようで。Erica giggled an openly indiscreet look on her face. Erica whispered to herself, but of course no one heard her. こちらはお館様のお恩人ベアトリーチ様でございますおじい様にバクダイナ黄金を授けてくれた後宮家復興のお恩人だそうだよただのじい様の中の妄想の魔女だぜこいつの亡霊が夜な夜な屋敷の中を歩き回ってるって話らしいぜ余生よ俺小さい頃はその話めちゃくちゃ苦手でこの屋敷の夜は苦手だったんだそんなこともあったね6年経った今はどうすっかり忘れてたがこの肖像画をまじまじ見てるうちにまた怖い気持ちがよみがえってきちまったぜ Not really, no. Not anymore, at least to me. Uyamayomotiribane.Motinaito.Shanon.Hi.Shiogintachnoida <laughs> <laughs> They keep bringing that up. What the fuck, Jessica? Jessica told it like a ghost story, trying to scare Erica, but Erica just laughed disdainfully. ただの事故だろ偶然だろおじい様がここに肖像画を掲げてすぐのことだから一昨年のことだと思うよ確かまさにここの大階段から落ちて怪我をしたんだよねそうそうこのバカでかい肖像画は何しろインパクトあったから
所詮は怪談妄想おとぎ話取るにも足らない寝ぼけたうつけ者のざれごと以下ですが Erica looked up at the portrait and smiled at it hostil hostily as though she felt that the smile was disrespectful to Beato Maria's face soured これでエリカが明日の朝変死してたな魔女殺人事件の幕開けだな。I don't mind seeing you dead, but okay. Oh, 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 my tante, and the raw tante, I can't really call us a little nante. Zans in the gills, eh? Oh, yeah, so they were coming as a net. Yen vacation, we such climbers. Not a hot dog, no cinema. Tante or Corostava, not a night to a kite, I didn't say she. Maria, even the motel. ベアトリーチェの呪いを防げるお守りお守りそんなのはあるのか After fishing around in her bag, Maria pulled out a string of beads attached to a medal that had a scorpion drawn on it. It looked like a cheap prize from an arcade or something. なんですこれうん魔除けのお守りなの効果は弱いけれど、これをつけてれば今夜一晩はきっとベアトリーチェの呪いを避けられるよ他にもクモの巣が魔除けに効くとも聞きましたおおベアトはきっと蝶の化身だからクモも苦手なんだねうんあれそれは悪敷島の悪霊が苦手な方じゃなかったっけクマサバさんが詳しいよなそういうの。魔女に悪霊<笑>少し興味を持ちましたよかったらゲストハウスでもう少し話を聞かせてもらえませんかこちらが皆さんの傘です外はまだだいぶ雨が強いのでお気をつけくださいシャンン handed out the umbrella she had brought everyone headed towards the exit After that, when there were none left standing in front of the portrait, a gold butterfly appeared. Then, expanding out into a golden splash, it became a human form. In the hall, empty now that the children had left, Beato stood alone and silent, looking up at her own portrait. Without a doubt, the figure depicted there was as, as like her as an image of, in a mirror. However, it felt as though its eyes and expression were just a little different from hers. From her perspective, while the person in this portrait was almost infinitely close to herself, it was just as surely a different person entirely. I'm not sure who I am. 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 Beato had already finished reading the fragments from Featherings Archive, which showed the tales of all the games so far. However, the witch called Beatrice, who had been depicted in them, had been so vastly different from her. At the very end, it looked as though that the witch and Battler had connected just a little bit as rivals. But for the most part, Beatrice had just bullied and bullied Battler in nearly all of the tales. Even though this is about her, she had no idea why Beatrice had tormented Battler so much when she had supposedly been born for Battler's sake. All she had learned from Featherine's archive was that the former Beato was a completely different person who defied understanding. Anatani, Nani got at the no deska. But as you are, Anatano Tamago Saste Hina Anatano Tsubasawa Oto Sama no Tameni at the has Sorega eats Katayoko Mogare Anoyoni Kawari Hate de Simatano deska. She had listened to the conversation Battler and the others had just been having. Beatrice can't handle scorpion charms? Beatrice can't deal with spider webs? It wasn't as though she would like to touch either of those if she had the choice, but nothing bad would happen if she did. 
Was being perfectly fine when around those proof that she wasn't Beatrice? Even though it was about herself, she didn't understand it all. So she quietly gazed into her own eyes on the portrait. It felt as though the truth hid behind those eyes. Beato slowly approached the portrait, and then she lightly touched it. When she did, it felt as though the portrait rippled slightly. Yes, this is a doorway. A doorway to the long path that would lead her to the Golden Witch, Beatrice. Beato felt a little dizzy. She lost her balance, feeling as though the world was twisting around her. Then, she couldn't tell which way was up or down, and was swallowed downwards. Plunk. With a soft, watery sound, Beato was sucked, in, sucked into the portrait. The world inside the portrait was pitch black. However, there was nothing unsettling about it. It was a comfortable darkness, like when you put your head under the covers in bed at night. Beato realized this was a world inside herself. So despite the darkness, she felt a warm embrace. As long as she asked for nothing, this world would ask nothing of her. But she couldn't remain like this. She didn't want to spend eternity inside the darkness of this world. Yes, I need to hatch out of my egg. This darkness is the shell surrounding the gold butterfly called Beatrice. She took her goal, her reason for being born, and put it into words. As if in response to those words, the seal on the shell began to melt away. Cracks appeared in the darkness and a brilliant light enveloped the world. And so, Beatrice was born. Uh -huh. Holy shit, two of them! There I stood, along with another me. For a second, I thought that the me in front of me was the real Beatrice, the one I wanted to be more like. However, she was looking back at me with the same bewildered eyes, so I realized that wasn't quite it. That's right. I wasn't the only one born from the egg. She was also born. My twin? No, it feels a bit different. How can I put it? Both of us are lacking something and immature. Yes, both of us are chicks, but we are also fragments of the true Beatrice. Beatrice. It felt as though we could become the real Beatrice together. No one explained this to us. However, we naturally understood. I decided to talk to this other me. Unless I get to know her and become one with her, I won't be able to become the Beatrice father desires. In other words, the thing that father wants from me, and was so heartbroken to find missing, must be something that she has. <sighs> the Beatrice with her hair down looked at me dubiously several times, and then finally spoke. <laughs> the true Beatrice also spoke in that manner. It looked like she really does have something that I lack. さあ、それは私にもわかりません。I realized that the thought I'd had a second ago, that together we could become the true Beatrice, must really have been true. Though the person in front of me does have the part that makes her a witch, which I lack, she does not possess the mission to live for Ushidomiya Balor's sake. She has what I do not, and I'm sure I have something she does not. きっと 
わらわはそなたが生まれるよりずっと前からここにいるえそ,そうだったんですか This feels weird seeing two Beatos. Uh, Beato. Bea Bea twins. I was born later. So, does that mean the mission to live for Ushidame Battler's sake was born later on? However, I don't think my existence is something quite as faint and intangible as a mission. I have enough of a personality to think and act as I am doing now. So, the witch Beato and I are separate people, both of us possessing something the other lacks. In that sense, maybe it's fitting for us to call ourselves sisters, as she says. あなたのことが知りたいんです。わらわも知りたい。そなたもまたわらわであることは理解している。そしてなぜにそのような言葉遣いであり、バトラに使えねばならぬのか。そしてどうやらそれを理解せぬ限り、わらわたちは互いに未
a mysterious witch who existed even before the rules. She has the same name as Beato, but she wasn't given the goal of devoting herself to Battler, the final version of the witch sealed away by Kinzo. She spends her days pulling small pranks and clearing away the magic-resisting toxin, all for the sake of her resurrection. She's similar to the evil spirits of Akuji Kishima in many ways, such as her fear of spiderwebs. She is the one who gave Shannon the golden butterfly brooch. Okay, nothing new about that one, I guess. Okay, okay. Whoa. Whoopsie. Huh. Interesting. Now we got two Beatos. Oh, oh, holy shit, I just noticed she actually has the one-winged eagle on her leg. Huh. That's cool. Wait a minute. Why does that look familiar? Hmm. One-winged eagle on the leg. Ah, fuck it, I must be imagining things. Anyway, holy shit, we actually got quite a bit done today. Hmm. And the good news is the power didn't go out. <laughs> holy shit, I, was, I would be extremely pissed if the power went out, but thankfully I got it saved. Oh, God. Anyway, thank you guys for Excuse me while I have a mouth stroke. Get to get got to see two Beatos and hmm, got to see a little Beato. Be I think uh, I think they labeled it as Beato Chick, Chick Beat Chick Beato. So Chick Beato is going on a journey of self discovery of sorts. Hmm. That was an interesting little monologue we were, or not monologue, but moment we had with Shannon and Cannon. Well, one thing I'm immediately just gonna say, fucking go for it, Cannon. Took him freaking long enough to finally just outright admit it near the beginning. How many times did it take him throughout the entire series to freaking just, we, it was only like near the end he finally admitted it. Now here, it's right the freaking beginning. Think freaking, took, took you fucking long enough, you little twerp. Oh, well. I don't know. Okay, I feel like I'm on... I, uh, in terms of trying to figure out the truth, who the hell Beatrice is, I feel like... It, feel, I feel, it feels like it's staring me right in the face. Like, I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to try to think about it a little bit more. But... I don't... I, I don't know. Anyway... Holy shit, I've missed, I'm just gonna say it again, I've, I've freaking missed Umineko, and I'm glad we're getting back into it, so, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video.